Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with the Trans Steel 2200. So we've had a lot of questions and, on this unit, and I'm just going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions on this Trans Steel 2200. Uh, a lot of good feedback coming with this machine. People seem to love it. It works really, really well, and it's just some of the, the idiosyncrasies of this machine that we're going to go over today. So let's dive right into it. On the first question that we seem to get a lot of questions about is wire diameter. So if you find yourself you're using a wire and you don't, it, there's no program say in the synergic line for that particular wire size. So it, for example, aluminum. All right, so as you can see, there's no program for 023030 or 035 in the aluminum 4043. So we suggest choose the nearest closest wire diameter, which is 040 gives you a synergic line setting, then you can adjust from there manually if you have to go up or down. Now at Fronius they suggest running 360 force. You notice there is no 360 force synergic line. So we choose the closest size, that's 045. 045, 360 force is actually 047, so it's the closest one. The synergic line is going to match that closely. So that was no question number one. Why, why do I not have an 035 setting for aluminum wire? There's my answer. Choose the closest one and then adjust from there. Or go to manual mode. Get out of Synergic and go straight to manual. And then you can just adjust your wire feed and your voltage from there. So next question on this is what is 2T, 4T, S4T, and then this diagram stand for? So 2T is just your standard trigger. So on, off, right? You pull the trigger, it's on. When you let go of the trigger, it's off. 4T is it's a double tap, so you on and then off. So it's a double tap. It's you push and release, that's on, and then you have to stop it, you have to push and release again. So that's a 4T. S4T is four. Let's just get out of this here. So back in the synergic line, S4T is for, say we're gonna weld aluminum, just for example. Now you're in control of your slope and end slope. So your uh, slope and crater fill, that kind of thing. So S4T, you pull the trigger, that's your slope. And then when you let go of the trigger, you hit your main current. And then when you pull the trigger again, that's your end slope, so your crater fill. And then when you release the trigger, that's your off. So to give you a better example on that sort of thing, we're gonna go, I'll draw you a diagram on this. So in this diagram, let me just get on this thing here real quick. We're gonna go across, come down. So this is the setting. This is SL. This is your main. This is your SL again. That's a slope down. And then this is your IE. So we got your hot start, your slope down to your main current that you set. This is your slope down to your crater fill. Now why I chose those IEIS, those settings. So if we dig down into this, referring to the this diagram here, if we go into our menu, which is push this button, press that button, we get into, it opens up with GPO, which is post flow, pre flow. There's a secondary menu, we'll go up at SL, there's your slope time. So your slope time is right here on the diagram. So SL for one second, so that's your down slope to your main current. IS is at 100%, so that's your hot start. Generally, if we're doing a hot start on aluminum, remember 364 is aluminum, we're gonna run it at 135% or 35% above what our main current setting is. IE is our crater fill, so we can do 100% would be your main current, or if we're gonna go with our crater fill at the very end, we're gonna be in, a, in between 80, 85 on our crater fill. So that's set for IE. 
We're gonna go to ITO. Hang on one second, let me get back. So that's all our slope settings. So on our, that's why I was correlating all the charts there with all the main settings that are in this program. So to get out of this, we're gonna push them two buttons again. Now we're back to the S4T. So we'll come back to that diagram here in a second. So going to this, this is spot timer and, and tack welding. So right now we're on tack. The, uh, so what you're gonna do is it's gonna pull. It's a predetermined setting. It's gonna give you a tack weld for whatever pre-time that you want. And then you can also change it to a spot timer or stitch welding is what I like refer to it as. So when we're on, we have that set up. So this is spot, SPT stands for spot time. So when we pull the trigger, we get one second of arc on time. That's what the spot is. This is your stitch timer, so SPB. We gotta turn that on and we choose a time. So that's how long the arc is off. So when we pull the trigger, we're in spot mode, right? We pull the trigger, we get one second of spot weld and then it's off for 0.3 seconds. We don't release the trigger and then it, the arc starts back up again for one second. So when we're stitching something, say on a body panels on a car, for, for instance, or um, you know, slot welds on like a sheet metal, that kind of thing, it might come in handy. But as you can see, when I get back out of this menu, now it's in, we're in our stitch mode setting. The little light lights up right there, so it's our stitch mode. Now, that's your stitch mode setting. Now to get out of that, we have to turn it off, then it goes back to normal. We just get out of that menu again. So just some good info on your crater fill, your slope time, that sort of thing. Um, next thing, when in doubt, if you're lost and you just, you're like, well, did I just screw this whole thing up, which is probably gonna happen. You're, you're thinking that in your head. We go to FAC, that's in our menu, and that's factory reset. So we're gonna hit, hold that button. It goes from Pro to Pro G. It's all set, it goes right back to factory reset. So machine set back to factory spec. We can get out of there and it goes back and then obviously we got to go back through and reset what we are welding or what we are working on that sort of thing all our predetermined stuff so as you notice after we did the factory reset right we're on synergic it just went back to steel gives us our two tap trigger which is standard so you notice that when i change my voltage my wire feed speed changes and when i change my wire feed my voltage and now i cannot change them independently anymore to do that if you want it so when you're in synergic and you want to adjust your voltage or your wire feed independently of one another you got to go into menu you find secondary menu you do the menu button again get in the menu so in the secondary menu you can change stuff from standard to us so you can go metric or you can go us standard we go to alc alc is off so alc is and remember if you can't remember all these numbers scan that URL code, it'll give you a little cheat sheet to tell you what each one of these does. So you go to ALC, you turn it on. So now, when we back out of this menu, we got back out twice, remember, because we're in the secondary. Now I can independently change these, change the voltage from the wire feed speed. So it lets you give you that little finite adjustment when you're in the synergic setting. Uh, that was one of the questions that comes up. You know, hey, I factory reset, now I can't change. So secondary menu, ALC, turn it on, and then you can change your voltage independently of wire feed. So I hope that answers everyone's questions. I know those have been some of the most popular ones. If you've got any more questions, leave comments below. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Stay tuned for more.